Hello. You're about to embark on a surgical mission called Total Hip Resurfacing. I'm Dr. Mark, and you will assist me in the operating room. You think you can handle it? Today, our patient is a 55-year-old man with healthy bones and no significant bone loss due to arthritis. Because of his young age and normal anatomy, hip resurfacing surgery will preserve more bone than a total hip replacement. Why do you think it's important to preserve bone in younger patients? That's correct. As you can see, most of the cartilage or cushion between the bone is gone, especially in this upper portion of the joint. The prosthesis we use during surgery will need to fit our patient. To do this, we use templates that determine the approximate size. Let's start with the acetabulum or cup of the hip. What size do you think fits best? Great! We now know the size of the acetabulum will be 60 millimeters. The femoral head will most likely be 6 millimeters smaller. What size femoral head should we use? Cool! I would not want to be your patient. Yes. With our templating done and our patient prepped and draped, it's time to operate. Scrub in, stat! Use the sterile marker to draw the location for our incision. Now for the incision. Grab the scalpel and cut through the skin and subcutaneous layer of fat. Nice slice. Next, cauterize the blood vessels with your bovi. This will reduce blood flow into the surgical field. Now, we'll soak up the remaining blood using a lap sponge. These retractors will hold the skin and fat layers back so we can get to the muscles underneath. Take the scalpel and cut through the tensor fascia lata and split the gluteus maximus along the fibers of the muscle. Next, cauterize the blood vessels with your bovi. Now let's pull back the split muscle using the deep retractors. Watch out for the sciatic nerve, which can be felt through the fat. If we damage it, our patient will lose feeling and have difficulty using his leg. I'll use two retractors to separate the gluteus medius and expose the piriformis tendon. Then I'll cut the short external rotator muscles and suture them out of the way. See the flexible capsule around the joint? Let's cut open this capsule and hold it back with sutures. I'll need you to dislocate the femoral head. Do this by flexing and rotating the femur. Great job! Now we can see the entire femoral head and how arthritic the joint is. Using a sizing gauge, measure the head and neck of the bone. The head size will influence which prosthesis size to use. Seeing we have already templated prior to surgery, why measure the neck of the femur again? Nice job. I've estimated the center of the femoral neck and marked the bone using a bovi cautery device. Now place the guide wire and I'll confirm that the position is accurate in three ways. First, the alignment guide shows that we have found the center of the neck and not just the center of the head. Second, if we centered the guide wire properly, this feeler gauge should rotate freely around the neck of the femur, which it does. Third, I'll finish placing the guide wire and check to see where it exits the bone. Why are so many steps taken to ensure that the center of the femoral neck is located? <laughs> Good job! Grab your drill and pass it over the guide wire to prepare the femoral head for the guide rod. And make sure you don't go deeper than the red line. That line corresponds to the size of our prosthesis.
That's some good grilling. Place the guide rod over the guide wire until the collar is flush with the surface of the femoral head. Good job! To fit the prosthesis, we need to shape the outside of the femoral head with the cylindrical reamer one size larger than our prosthesis. Your mom would be so proud right now. I will finish with a smaller reamer. Great! We have changed the diameter of the femoral head to the correct size. The next step is to shape the top of the femoral head with a hemispherical reamer. This reamer will allow for a tight fit. You're a natural. Before we fit the trial component, take the rangeur and cut off the small amount of bone left at the top of the femoral head. Now place the trial component on the prepared bone. Yeah, fits like a glove. Good work. The head diameter is larger than the component used in traditional total hip replacement. Why will a larger head diameter give our patient an advantage? <laughs> That's correct. In order to make room for work on the acetabulum, we will move the femoral head into the pocket created in front of the acetabulum. This allows us to see the acetabulum clearly for the next step. During pre-op planning, we chose a 16 millimeter prosthesis cup for the acetabulum. We will need to gradually increase our reamer size to prepare the cup for the right component. Generally, a cup 1 to 2 millimeters larger than the final reamer size is inserted for a good fit. You've done this before, haven't you? I will finish preparing the acetabulum for the prosthesis cup with a size 58 millimeter reamer. Now we mount the cup on an insertion device, which also serves as a guide to help find the correct orientation. Align the device with the line shown. Tap the cup into the acetabulum until the bone completely surrounds the edge of the metal cup. Before we test the prosthesis, we need to remove any bone spurs using the rangeur. Time to test the prosthesis for stability. If the hip is able to move freely, then we know the prosthesis is not likely to dislocate. I will pick up the leg and make sure it straightens all the way. Then rotate the foot and knee out and away from the other leg. Then rotate the leg inward toward the other leg. Finally, push the leg up into a running position. This test shows good range of motion and hip stability. It looks great. Okay, let's put the real prosthesis in. First, we'll dislocate the femoral head and remove the trial prosthesis. Now we're ready to cement in the permanent femoral prosthesis. Use the burr to create a small trough in the femoral head where indicated. Why do we need to make a small trough? <laughs> Grab some cement and spread it onto the femoral head. Then use the impaction device to gently tap the prosthesis in place. Now we'll wait for the cement to harden. I will put the hip back into place and check range of motion one more time. Nice job. Time to close. This part is a little complex, but you've proven how skillful you are. So drill three small holes in the femur. Okay, let's suit your hip capsules to the holes you just drilled. I'll suture the deep tissue, and you take the subcutaneous fat layer. Now use staples to close the surface of the incision.
Your technique? Flawless. The OR team will bandage the incision and move the patient to the recovery room. Our patient will remain in the hospital another two to three days, followed by three to six weeks of recovery and physical therapy. The downtime will allow his muscles to heal and strengthen. Following that, our patient will have significantly less pain and a higher quality of life. One thing about this surgery that makes it great for younger patients is that it preserves bone, as you can see from this post-op x-ray. Thanks for helping out today, and good luck with the rest of your residency training.